And I think as I stated earlier, I ordered a new seal for the driver assembly cover. Here's the part number. It was an eBay item. So uh, I can't really tell you who the seller was right now. But you should be able to see that. And uh, it's very fragile, it's very thin. So be careful when you're handling this puppy. Here's the old one, and here's the new one. I'm gonna pause for a second, clean this up really good. I want both surfaces to be uh, pretty much pristine when it goes on. So Perfect. I've got the line from the oil pump to the carb. I'm 100% positive on that oil pump, so I'll run some premix on it first. But I did blow it out with uh, actually PB blaster and then some light oil through the bleed valve and it came out good so we'll see putting a new fuel line on it with an inline fuel filter if that uh, restricts it then i'll just go with a larger one or eliminate altogether but we'll see and let's see we got the cover on new gasket tires on i'm dry fitting the tank at the moment just to line things up got the new pet cock put on i used a little bit of a pfte tape just to make it more of a solid connection there and uh, oil pumps looking good that's gonna get the cover on it and I couldn't find the little wire clips that ha they had used previously I don't know if I I just had an example and there it is examples over here these little wire clips they didn't have very much uh, tension on them so I splurged about 14 bucks and got a little kit here I like these they're nice and tight once they go on a lot of tension so I'm putting those on the fuel in the oil line all right just to go over what we've done so far got the carb of course installed we've got the oil feed line got the fuel line got a little filter installed got the tank installed Got the carrier rack installed. Uh, a lot of the wiring connections were oil soaked. I'm not sure how that happened in the past, but had to clean those up. We're ready to install the battery. Got the battery here. It's got new uh, new battery, new electrolyte, new acid. And right now I'm getting ready to pop the old filter out, which I'm going to guess is pretty dang close to being original. And we got a new one here. And here's the information on the new one, if you can read it. I'm not sure where I got it. I think it was off of eBay. I got the foot peg uh, cosmetic covers on. Got the muffler back on. I cleaned up the uh, port and found a new exhaust gasket online. So I got that on order. The one I've got is in fair shape. It's not damaged, but once again, it's probably original time to replace the only thing i've got is one screw missing off the rear fender mount and i think that's it everything else seems to be here i got the uh, brake adjusted tire rotates freely that nr7 irc nr77 so it is a little bit loose but i think once we get this other screw in over here it's going to even this up a little bit it is a little bit wobbly without that screw and that's it for the moment we'll get the air box on and see how it goes i think the manual calls for 20 weight oil to be used on the air filter i'm not going to go buy it i've got some can in air filter oil so that's what's getting used I'm not going to overanalyze this one. <clears throat> Let that soak in a little bit. And I'm going to put it on. All right, a few helpful hints for anyone who's trying to install an air box without prior knowledge. First off, the little rubber mount that goes over the carb throat. It's got a little 
tab on it or, or place for a tab you'll see that and if you look on the air box itself you'll see there's a tab right here so when you put this on you're going to want to get that inside the tab to prevent it from spinning and it goes in horizontally between between the frame and the rear fender and the right side has an opening and the right side attaches right here next to the coil so things I just discovered we'll get back all right so I identified what size these are they're five millimeter by ten so the diameter of five length ten so it's an m5 by point eight by ten fits pretty good nothing protruding on the interior and I've already put some Yama lube on the inside of the oil uh, just as a test and I'm going to put premix in the tank and we'll see if we can fire this up. Okay, it helps if you take the choke off before you start adjusting the carburetor. All right, well, we had it started up for a short period of time. And I started to adjust the carburetor. And at one point, I had the air mixture all the way in. And the, um, the idle screw was out pretty much the entire way. So... It was still running high on idle high rpms so i realized that this wasn't going to do it so i pressed down on top of the cable and the idle went down the cable was being held up so i know i rebuilt the carb cleaned this really well and i thought well i'll probably need to lubricate the uh, the cable so i started going up here to the throttle to uh, disassemble it to lubricate it when I saw this so it's not being held properly I don't know if you can see that it, the outer covering is outer casing is completely split so so it's just not uh, it's not probably going to act in the same manner as it would when it was new so instead of trying to I don't know put something on here like a shrink tube or something I'm just going to replace it I've already ordered one off of Amazon, whether hopefully it's the right size. You kind of hit and miss with some of these items on Amazon. So uh, once it comes in, we'll see what happens. I'll hang on to this just in case I do have to uh, go for a weird fix of some type. But it did run. It ran pretty good. Uh, probably took three or four kicks, very soft kicks, to uh, get it started on the initial start. And that was probably just letting the fuel get into the carb. Otherwise, while I'm waiting on that, I'll go ahead and work on replacing the front tire. And then hopefully get to a point of being able to clean up some of this rust that is on, uh, on the brackets, you know, like down here. I'd like to try to get rid of this a little bit better. Well, we're getting there. We'll be back. All right, I just installed the new throttle cable. It, uh, it's not the best fit. I ordered it off of Amazon, and I got it from a company called Motion Pro. 
and the cable itself is made in Taiwan and, and it's a, at least a half inch too long I've made it work but I wasn't too th happy with it uh, to get the old one off what I did was disconnected the cable from the hand throttle uh, just by removing the screws to split the case here and disconnect it then what I did was I just uh, cut the cable off the 90 degree and then attach the new uh, cable from the cable junction side to it and pulled it through so the 90, new 90 degree would still be on the outside and then of course installed this installed the other end on the junction side which is right here you just pull the boot back one screw separates the halves just pay attention to the positioning no big thing this is where the cable comes out of the frame right here anyway so after I got it all together I had a large amount of slop right here it was easily visible so I had to go up here and adjust the cable throttle or the uh, cable throttle adjuster nut and almost to the end of its uh, threads and that should not be right then that wasn't enough so I then had to go to the brass screw on top of the carb if I can get this off right here and I had to adjust that up and uh, finally got to a point where there really was no more adjustment available but right now when I turn the throttle I do have a good response on a slide I can view that through the throat of the of the carb so I'm just got to leave it as it is and hope that this cable never stretches uh, for the time that I have it so I'm taking the front tire off I got the uh, front brake disconnected right here and I was getting ready to cut what I thought was a string that a previous owner had placed on it until I turned it around I thought you know that's very well done I wonder if that was done at a shop to hold the two cables together that uh, that's interesting so I'm not gonna cut that all right we got the tire off I got the bearings out I just used a uh, very small flat punch and working through the spacer I was able to get just the corner edge of each bearing and just worked my way around it gently until I was able to pop it out I just placed it over a, uh, a hole here on the corner and tapped it with a small hammer and it worked out so the next step is to remove the inner tube and the tire and clean up this rim I think you can see there's quite a bit of rust here well, it's not perfect, but it's better. I just use a scotch bright and then 400 grit sandpaper on the on the worst spots. And then a little bit of a rust converter after I clean it up. Just dab it on with a Q-tip. So we got the majority of the rust off. Spokes have surface rust, but nothing, uh, no pitting at all. Same for the hub. So... It's going to be what I call good enough. Just a quick example of what you can do with the Scotch Bright and WD-40. See if I can point here. Here you can see the untreated rusty area. It's mainly surface rust, but it looks like it's much worse until you put a WD-40 in a Scotch Bright. And uh, Scotch Bright is just the old green scrubbies. I get the larger ones. I just cut off a piece as I need it. That way you have more control with your fingers and just rub it out and uh, corrosion comes off really good I've done this side already and down here and then this was the same as what you see over here so if you have this on your bike or any chrome feature it, uh, it works pretty good okay per the IPB this should be the uh, the assembly 
order. You got the axle, then you got a spacer. We're trying to put mine in that way. Then we have a seal, and the open part of the seal will be facing in toward the rim. Then you got a bearing. I got closed bearings, and in this case, it doesn't matter what position they're in. If you have open bearings, uh, put the open, well, the area that you can see the bearings toward in, unless you have both sides that are open, then it doesn't matter. Then you got a spacer and a flange. When mine came off, they were pressed together. I'm just gonna leave them that way. That's the way it goes in. Then you got the rim itself. And then after the rim, another bearing. And then I've got my brake uh, speedometer drive assembly already assembled. Actually, it never really came apart. All I did was replace the brake shoes and then that'll fit in there. I just put zip ties on it to hold the shoes in place. So this IPB can be found numerous places online. I just downloaded the manual online and printed it from that. So it uh, comes in handy if you've taken this off and it's been a few days. Refreshes the memory. So this is the order. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is in assembling the uh, bearings, etc., is install the bearing that's nearest the brake assembly. And if you look at the IPB, it's going to be number 20. So we'll start with that one. You can do a couple of different things they will fit in tight, but not terribly tight. And you, you want to take it down to um, where the cut is. It will auto, obviously automatically stop. And I do not have a hammer right in my hand. Don't need a sludge. I think I'll just use a hammer that's readily available. A little framing hammer here. You can do a couple different things. Some people use the bearings that you took out, but the bearings I took out aren't bad shape at all. So I'm going to save those. I got a three quarter inch impact socket and I'm just going to gently tap this in. By the way, since it is a sealed bearing, there's really no inside outside. It's just, uh, normally you would put the, um, how can I say it? Any portion of the bearing that has writing on it, like the model number or a part number, etc., on the outside. But in this case, uh, they're the same, so it doesn't matter. So, like I said, I'm going to use a three-quarter inch socket and just gently tap it in. All right, now we're going to flip it and start on the other side. The next thing out will be the. Uh, another spacer and what they call a flange washer and it would fit in like this of course normally you're going to be having it over the top of the axle just like that so we'll set it in place then after that it's going to be the next bearing and this one almost can be pressed in by hand it's that loose whether that's good or not, I can't say. There's really no need to add any extra grease at this point. These are sealed. This has been cleaned up. I did a very, very light cleaning with the uh, Scotch-Brite. So there's no rust or anything else. So we'll just pop her in. So we want to leave enough room, tap the bearing in far enough to be able to get the seal on. And your next spacer will also fit in. So I'm going to tap this a few more times to make sure it's seated. That's it there. Next part is the actual seal. All right. I had to get quite forceful on the rubber seal. Wasn't real happy with it, but there was just no other way to get it in there. So 
I did put it in the freezer first to help contract it. So that helped. And I put a little WD-40 around it. But that one was a still, still a rough one. I don't know. But it's in there. And it's going to do its job. So we're happy. Next one is the uh, brake assembly. If you look inside, you'll see the shape of the drive. And you'll see that there's a cutout portion on the brake flange here. So obviously you just want the lobes of this drive to fit here. So if it doesn't fit firmly, just spin it until it does. And when it's on, it will be in this position here. So your speedometer cable will come down through here, then the brake underneath of it through here and then latch on here. So the next step, which is going to be the uh, spacer on this side and the axle. And now it's ready to get on. Okay, this is the IRC NR77. I remember right yeah it's the uh, 70 slash 90 by 14 after we get it on the front the fender support brackets are a problem it's not extreme you can see here so basically we just need to take this bend out here and here as much as possible and also on the back side tire now the back one it's a lot less but it's there so I'm gonna go with it give it a try if I have to take it off and adjust it again I will we'll be back and this is the way the speedometer clip goes on there's a really thin groove cut into the aluminum housing so once you put the cable in and get it seated properly in the drive then you'll press the then you'll press the wire clip in until it fits within that groove all I did was use, use my fingers and a very small screwdriver and uh, you'll eventually get it in there it, if, you, if the wire isn't bent or the, the little wire clip isn't too bent you'll actually feel it click in and then that holds it in so that's one done and I forgot to mention when you do put the tire on you'll see that there's a index um, I don't know lobe right here on the frame or the fork and it will obviously lock in place on the housing of the brake brake assembly so make sure you get that in there otherwise this will free float and uh, it's not good it's not gonna be good all right one of the final things to do is replace the exhaust gasket basically it's just a matter of prying it out use whatever you got it's thin so you should be able to bend it of course it's also a matter of getting it positioned somewhere so you can no, oh, that came out easy. All right. That'll be fine for this one. Doesn't matter which side is in. Just get it in there. Once you crank it down, it's going to compress. Because we're not even there. It's 
what we do. We drive in circles. Runs good. Definitely no issues. Oh, it's so nice and quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna run that carb out of gas though right now. Mm -hmm. 